Right. Hola. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Julio Colón. Um, I'm from the Dell EMC. I'm here with my coworker, uh, Lida He and uh, Magdi Salem. We're going to be talking about um, Urano. Um, we have an agenda here. So we have, we're going to have a few topics. We want to go over Murano. Uh, first, a quick review for those of you who have never used Murano. How many of you uh, have heard about Murano? How many of you haven't installed? A few hands. Okay, that's going good. How many plan to use? How many plans to use it? Okay, I good. Guess. So we are we all in the same boat. Um, so let's, I'm going to do a quick review. Uh, just a few seconds there. Uh, what are the challenges to doing Murano? What are the containers? What are containers and how are we using it to help deploy Murano? Um, and then we're going to show you how to deploy an app catalog. And at the end of the session, we have a Q&A. And I just learned we also have some uh, raffle tickets around. And we're going to get in uh, one prize for you guys. OK. So a quick review of Murano. Um, yeah, so Murano uses the regular components of OpenStack. Mm -hmm. And as you see here, we have um, yeah, a quick overview of the architecture. And you use Heat, Keystone, and Horizon. Um, everybody here, I guess, should know about this. Um, and the reason about Murano is it helps uh, automate some of the deployment of applications. So um, for that, there is something called a Murano engine, who drives mostly of the, of the, mostly of the orchestration. And then there's a Murano API, who allows the communication and the interfacing with the engine. Uh, gladly, we have a Murano CLI, which allows the interfacing with the engine through the API. And there is a Murano dashboard, which is used to um, uh, con uh, connect to um, Horizon. And through Horizon, it goes through the API and through the engine to do the orchestration. Um, there is a Murano engine that is installed uh, to facilitate the VMs and, 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 um, and installation. Um, in this diagram, we have two Rabbit and queues. We'll go over that later. Um, it's not necessary, but that's how we have it, have it set up. So what is Murano itself? Um, Murano, uh, what we, when you install it, you will have something like uh, an additional plugins added to your horizon. And the whole reason of this is to facilitate um, through the user interface how to access the uh, app catalog and the environments that you're going to be creating. But in reality, Murano, when you look at it, is, is like the phones that we had, the flip phones back a few years ago, where we used it only for calls. And that's, that's, that was the only use for it, calls. But then we have an app store. And that makes all our life easier, right? So we have apps, and we can do things with them. We have you know, um, Uber or, or, or PayPal and all these applications that, that can help bring people together or get things done faster. And the same concept is here with Murano, right? So you have apps that you can download from the web, put in, in, the, in the marketplace or, or the Murano uh, front end. And then you can easily deploy your environment for, in, like in this case, an Apache server. You click, and technically you're done. Um, and if you need a continuous integration system like Jenkins, it will be deployed for you. So you don't really have to do this manually anymore, because Murano, just like the app stores, facilitates uh, the deployment. Um, when I started with, um, when I started coming to the OpenStack summits, um, I really liked the whole approach of Murano. And then I tried to do the installation. But then this is what was really challenging for me. Um, and based on the survey here, I think everybody really knows what Murano is, but only a few of you have it installed. And I wonder why, right? So the challenges that I run with, which maybe is the same challenges that you're having, is there are many steps to follow in order to get Murano installed. Um, if you look at mostly of the uh, components in uh, OpenStack.org, you will see that there are really detailed instructions how to install Nova, Neutron, and all these other components. But if you look at Murano, not really nothing really re well written there that we can follow as uh, the base core uh, packages. So there's also, once you get to the instructions and trying to find how to install it, you will have conflict with packages. There's some pip in conflicts, there's some Python. 
uh, installer issues, sometimes the libraries doesn't work well. And it's, it's some, there's some you know, learning curve there. Uh, on top of that, there are all the tricky uh, set of uh, areas that we have to work with. We have a local MySQL, you have a local RabbitMQ, Keystone integration, you have um, uh, insecure and uh, SSL connections. So if you want to make it secure, there's another overhead there that you need to configure. Um, and then you have to do multiple installations. You have the Murano API, like I showed in the architecture. You have the engine and the endpoints. Um, and at the end, once you have mostly of the backend instruction done, then you have to fight with the horizon to get it deployed into, into your UI. So assuming everything works and you get everything in the horizon, then you start having these issues. Uh, you're unable to communicate with the API. Um, the errors sometimes are dangerous. So, but we love Murano, right? We, we really like, and, 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 and we really like to improve it. Um, oh, I forget one slide here. So um, if you go to the command logs, sometimes you get these errors also, which doesn't help you. So we really try. So like I said, we, we love Murano, and uh, we really like to, we like to improve it, and, and we like to help people get it going on. It's a great piece of technology. Um, so I was discussing this with my coworkers, because uh, we want to see, okay, there's got to be a better way that we can help other people uh, getting Murano running. And so I talked to me, my, with my coworker here, Lita, and, and Magdi, and they decided to do something about it. So this is where I'm going to let Lita, Lita he, uh, join him here, to explain what did he do to get this a uh, better approach. Thank you, uh, Julio. Um, so, so the goal here is we want to, to achieve for, for this uh, exercise is to want to um, have something that the users can pick it up quickly and start running with it. So, um, so to make it easy, so instead of uh, spending all the time to troubleshoot all the issues that Julio talking about, so you can grab something and get it running, so it's focused on developing uh, the features instead of, you know, putting for your head to try and figure out well, why this error message means. And also, um, we want to serve this uh, as a, like a, some kind of a springboard for you to want to further customize your environment and try to build new images, trying to build, uh, deploy in different ways, trying to, you know, things, things, all things like that. So, so it is a kind of very easy starting point um, to, um, to, um, uh, uh, to get it started, so so you don't have to spend like weeks up to set it up. That's the, that's our goal here. So uh, so we kind of choose kind of the Docker container to try this, and um, uh, there there are a few advantages. So there's, uh, for example, the Docker can help you to isolate the dependencies instead of getting all those conflicting dependencies, especially between uh, the people uh, whatever the installed the Python package installed by the. Uh, your native management taxi system and, and some other Python um, pa uh, management system. So, 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 so the, the Docker can try to um, minimize that. And also, uh, we can, you know, it can help to kind of automate some of the configurations between different components. And uh, also, um, once you find a good combination, and you can save them into the image so that you don't have, um, you know, next day you wake up and you try to compile and suddenly somebody checked in your code and then you, you, your, your, your system is broken again. So, so we're trying to get a stable environment for people to, uh, to use. Um, Um, so this is kind of like a, a deployment um, architecture of what, what you will get from the container. And, um, and you'll, that's, you'll see this kind of very similar to the architecture presented by, the, uh, by Julio earlier, but in this case we put everything inside this container just to, for simplicity. And, um, and uh, you see there's RapidMQ running, which is basically we can talk about the you can deploy multiple, uh, two um, rapid MQs. One is for your infrastructure for OpenStack, and another one is for the communication between the agent and the, and the Mirano engine. And uh, also, it has the API running, it has the engine, uh, engine running there, and uh, also, once the VM is deployed by the, um, 
um, by Mirano, then you, uh, you, you, VM, then you would you, start a Mirano engine, which you will internally will configure your, your applications and do whatever the things that you want to do. And also, in addition, it has a, a database um, down below there, and also a horizon with the Mirano dashboard. So what I've seen here is kind of get packed in into the single container. Uh, f uh, before I go any further, I t for those who are starting with Docker, um, I, this is not the best use of Docker technology, or container technology, because in general, uh, we want to the container uh, you know, to be microservice for something as small as possible, and to run quickly, this is definitely we're using this as for simplicity, we're putting everything inside Docker, this is not the best way to use it. So for those who are starting with this, don't get <laughs> misled by this practice. Um, the, so um, uh, just, just a word of caution there. Um, <clears throat> Um, so here's some of the prerequisites to get this running. So, uh, of course, you need to learn Docker a little. It may have some um, a learning curve for you, but in the beginning. But uh, if you have no Docker already, so this, this should be very straightforward to get started. And of course, you would need uh, a, a OpenStack environment. And uh, the things we found out that uh, the most troublesome issue with the, uh, with, with agent is uh, with Miranda deployment is that you want to make sure that your network is configured. Uh, correctly. Otherwise, uh, you would have a lot of trouble deploying your 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 your, your catalog. Um, so one thing we found is to make sure that your internet has access. Your your network has an. Uh, um, in, in internet access, especially the DNS server, because when, once the Miranda engine. Uh, agent started in the VM is going to go to the internet and pull in all these packages. And if it doesn't, we cannot resolve those uh, uh, names, then you'll, you'll be in trouble. So that's where we kind of get hit in the very beginning. So we'll scratch your head, why, why time out? And, uh, and another thing you want to make sure that the user that's running this Mirano application uh, needed to have the uh, heat stack owner role. And, uh, and otherwise, they will fail with the heat in orchestration. Um, okay, so to get started, so we have things that checked into the GitHub, and uh, you can certainly kind of pull down that uh, from the GitHub and uh, and modify um, this uh, startup script. And also, the, the GitHub also contains a Docker file. So, if for those who um, who want to further um, explore how to uh, expand this to uh, to your product product environment, then you can you can change the Docker file and uh, and um, uh, and, and, and customize. So, but to get it running simply, you would, the minimum you need to do um, um, is to configure the, where is your Keystone host and where the username password and where's the admin project. And uh, it, will, it will start for you. And, um, and those are the, the few parameters, the minimum parameters that you can start. So if you go through the, uh, the, the script, you will see there's a few more things in it uh, with some default configuration, the port numbers, which you can customize to your environment. But uh, you know, for, you to, for you to get started quickly, this will be something you need to configure. And um, uh, again, I just want to see this is a little kind of prototype we're doing. And uh, I, I mentioned about the Docker uh, technology here, so you know, maybe in the future what we want to do is to have a, a, um, a like a use Docker Compose to 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 replace this clunky uh, startup script. But there's something if we get time, we may we may uh, we may, we may do it to make it even easier and more kind of a modern modern application that you could deploy. And um, just uh, quickly, once you have that started, you will just run this startup script. And then you will see at the bottom of this uh, sc uh, slide here, you will see it has some output. And then uh, you can tell the log file there. You can also certainly change the, uh, where the log file goes, things like that. And uh, in the end, it, sh it should give you a uh, printout that there's, uh, um, a, this is the URL to go to get to the um, uh, Mirano uh, dashboard. And, um, you know, once you get it up and running, so this is what it would look like. And I'm not going to go through a lot of details with these the steps here uh, because they're, they're very good uh, quick start um, a document uh, from the Murano uh, project page. And, uh, but here you see, once you, 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 you get it running, you'll see on the left, you see, you see a, a Murano uh, a tab uh, with application catalog and, and, uh, and, and then some of the how to manage the, the, the packages. So the first thing you need to do once you start it you can um, 
uh, you need to kind of import a package. You know, a package is basically uh, it, 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 instead of a zip file, the a zip file contains some of the various uh, components that are needed to run that application. And my colleague Mike D is going to cover that more in more detail later. And uh, the next thing you need to go over to is to create an environment. Uh, environment in Mirano is kind of defined as a, like an isolated uh, a group of isolated services, and uh, they are you know, generally are not supposed to um, interfere with each other. And uh, you know, also for security reasons, they generally deploy a environment in the in the particular uh, network segment. And so that here, if you look at this, uh, this environment default network, we are choosing the network where. We, we kind of uh, uh, configured earlier, and uh, you can just choose that. Uh, what you can also choose to, uh, to create a new one. And uh, so that's kind of, you create an environment like this. Once you do, your environment is ready, what you, you do is just to add a component to the, um, uh, uh, to the environment. Here, the, 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 the little uh, 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 Apache HTTP uh, uh, component is what, uh, whatever you uploaded with the package earlier. And uh, you, you know, this should be very straightforward to go. And the next is to, you know, deploy. It's very simple. You just go ahead and deploy. And uh, um, and uh, shortly after, you will see. Go to your instance uh, page on Horizon. You will see the the, the VM get spin up. And uh, under this, the cover is uh, all this thing is uh, is done by heat orchestration. So you should you can view some view some uh, if you are you are into the heat. Uh, Templates, and you can take a look at the templates on on this screen here. And uh, voila! So if everything works, that's what uh, you would get <laughs> with the, uh, with with the, with that page. So that basically the, you should be happy once you have you see that page, and uh, uh, that means your your you you have you have an end to end process completed um, with, with maybe in, like, hopefully like in a few minutes. <laughs> Okay, so here's some of the, uh, again, you can also use the Miranda CLI. You can get into the Docker engine. Um, for those who are not familiar with Docker, I mean, this, you, you know, you can, you can learn, learn those commands quickly. So you can also create a, like a UMB file to point to where this, uh, this your OpenStack is. And then, you know, well, I'll give you an example here. You can, you, can, you can do the environmental list. There's a long list of command lines you can run, but, uh, you know, you can easily get into the container and run those commands. And to uh, to explore, um, uh, so here's some of the troubleshooting things uh, we would have encountered. There's there's once you deploy the containers, you should have these log files in in that directory over there uh, on your on the container host, and um, uh, also you can also uh, SSH to your VM and also check on. Uh, there's a, you know, on the var log, there's a Mirano agent log file. You can check log. Also, the, the, the resolve.conf, which, which should have your, um, your DNS server that you configured earlier for the network. And uh, another thing is that the Mirano agent.conf, which is basically the RabbitMQ configuration. Make sure those things are, uh, are, are there in place. And uh, if they are not there, then you know, that means there's something wrong, either with your image or with the process of deploying these things. And uh, here's some, some of the common issues we run into that, of course, you know, people make mistakes by type, you know, uh, by the, you know, getting the password wrong. Or so, I mean, for that, you can check the Mirando dash init log file, where it will show you something that, you know, what says you, know, you, you get it wrong. And also, um, uh, there might be in your environment there because there, you may need to communicate with with RabbitMQ on your OpenStack deployment. So you, your file, the corporate firewall may block the port. So you have to make sure that uh, you those ports are open. That's all. And also, uh, we'll talk about uh, earlier about the DNS server configuring for the subnet. So um, if your 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 application is not developing, for 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 example, Apache is not running on that machine. Double check your DNS configuration, and also we found out there's some you know we, normally we, we run this on the on the v, VMware environment and some some OpenStack environment there's virtual machines there's some time skews so so you have some big time skews between your your, your container host and also the OpenStack environment then you may run into something like this and uh, like uh, a funny thing like this which is very hard to 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 debug so but uh, and just just in case you run into that. And um, I think that's, that's what uh, my portion of the presentation, I will pass the, the rest uh, 
the baton to uh, my colleague, Magdi. Thank you, Lydia. Um, so we're going to talk about uh, the app catalog. Okay. So how many of you build a Murano application and submit it? And you guys are experts. <laughs> so what is the app catalog? So Murano provide us a, a simple web interface that it's integrated with Horizon. So the cloud operator doesn't need to go to different place. They just inside the Horizon website, they can uh, go to Murano catalog and you will have all your application is sitting there. And the application catalog is a great area where you can group part of your application and just assign it to one environment. So if you have your web developer, he needs his website, his uh, database, his queue, you can all of them group them, assign them to environment, and just with one button or button, you have all the environment uh, deployed for you. So how we can create a Murano application? Uh, creating Murano application is actually a very simple process. You create the application, you import it into Murano, then you deploy it. So, let's see how this happens. Uh, Murano application has a specific structure. So, and usually when you import it into, uh, when you create the application and import it into Murano, you have to import it in a form of a compressed file, zip format simple zip format. So here we can see the, the structure of the application. The first we have we need to have a classes folder. That's where you, you will have your Murano programming, programming language, the PL classes. That's uh, very much is a YAM file with uh, all the structures there. Then we have the resource folder. The resource folder will have the deployment and execution plan. Also, it has a deployment script there. You need to create a UI folder, and that's where the user, when they import the package, and that's allow the end user, when they execute the, the application or deploy it, it will give them this UI with different field to create the application. Then we have the application entry points, the manifest, the main manifest for the application, and we have the logo. So if we try to, to look behind the scene, that would be very much something very simple like this. Uh, so as Ida said, before we can interact with Murano, we're just executing the container. Then after this, you like here we have example of the classes. It has a YAM file for Nixon. We have the resources folder there with the files, and the UI and the logo. And we'll just run a zip command. So if you finish the steps, the next one is we try to import the application into the catalog. So if we try to do it from uh, the command line here, First, make sure that we have the, the Keystone resources loaded. <laughs> uh, Sometimes we forget to try to run the command right away. And, sorry. After we load the, the resource file, we can just run a simple command, Murano package import, and we specify our application. If everything works well, we should see this application uh, it, and its logo showing under uh, Murano catalog. And if we choose to import it, it's the same thing, we can give it a name, we can give it a different name if we decide. And the UI here is the UI file here. It, it shows how we, different field we specify in the UI file. And we can just simply choose to deploy this application. So, so you have the application, you assign it to one environment. Once it's added to the environment, like as we see here, this environment has the component Nixon. We just click in deploy environment. And if we check under an instant, we should see uh, the instant there. 
And if we try to access from the website, we should see it there. So that's our Hello World with Murano running in container. And uh, something to mention at the end that Murano, in order to deploy it, doesn't use any image. It should use a specific lens image that it needs to have a Murano agent running there. And that's how Murano services communicate with the agent. So here is we have some steps how you can clone it from uh, GitHub. And the last thing here at the end, the disk image that how you create your image. Now, if you try to check uh, GitHub uh, for Murano, there is tons of applications there. So I encourage you to go and look. I actually have a quite bit of library there. So you can download the application and customize it based on your company need if you need to change something there. Or if it's, it's good for your business, you can just deploy it as it is. Uh, that's more information about um, the container and our Hello World example. And that's it. That we have for you guys. And we have the. We have one more. Ah, we don't have the QA. Yeah. Yeah. So we have Rafael. And before the Rafael, do you have any question? I don't want to question from you. Any questions? <laughs> okay. Questions? Raffle? <laughs> so, no. If you have no question, then we are going to go into the raffle. Um, do you have the ball? You got a question? I, yeah, and I have a question. Yeah. So, uh, do you run the Docker of hosting Murana on the controller nodes of OpenStack or on the VMs? I probably missed it. It's, it's oh, you can run it on anywhere you have the Docker engine installed. Right? It, uh, do you have a preference? I mean, this is, again, this is for prototype and not for production environment. So in general, if you have, depending on really how you deploy your OpenStack, your existing OpenStack, if they are running on, on bare metals, you probably should have what this Mirano engine APIs, just as you deploy the like Nova, you know, they will have in engine APIs, whatever, those things, the databases, and, you know, you can share, the, they can share the databases. So, so for production, you would definitely want to move those compo component to do your best practice instead of, you know, this is this definitely not for production, it's for, for you know. Yeah. You got a question? There's a microphone there. But. Can you uh, talk yeah. to that microphone? Yeah. Uh, hello, I want to clarify what kind of changes uh, you experienced uh, while trying to install Rana, for example, from packages, because as far as I know, um, Rano is following the same uh, requirement suggestions as the uh, rest of the OpenStack components. So they use the same requirements, I believe, and from perspective of packaging, because I am doing packages. As RPMs, as devs, they are more or less the same and they are working out of the box. So um, I'm just curious what so kind of experience. I, I can uh, tell, me, tell me on that. So the it normally, when you know, in, in, in a proper environment, you could have like an OpenStack running already, so you don't have to worry about you know, you know, you say here, here's OpenStack I can use. Another thing is that, um, is my speaker on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah, we can hear you. So, um, is is that um, uh, so? You have you normally have your environment. Another thing is that if you normally someone like pull some packages like Red Hat, uh, Packstack, or whatever you. You run it, you set it up, it's up and running in a, a half an hour, right? So you have those, those things a preview already for you, but for us, we're trying to add in Murano, then we, we have to go those packages ourselves, right? Be because somebody did hard work already for other components, but for Murano, it's, I, we haven't seen a lot that people are doing that. I think maybe Mirantis has done some good job with, with Murano building, um, but uh, for us, we, we want to do some prototype and to fit our environment, we have to go through the packaging systems. We have this, you know, different different environment. Like, you know, so the, the, so. the idea is that you're deploying uh, Murano on already deployed OpenStack. Right, right, we, right. So, so yeah. yeah. Briefly, maybe comment on that. I think that it highly depends on distro you use, right? And if the distro doesn't contain Murano as a service, mm -hmm. then probably you have issues with deploying it, right? But right, if, exactly. Yeah. So we uh, this. Uh, past release cycle, we concentrated on uh, addition of Murano into 
uh, Ubuntu Cloud Archive packages, RDO packages, and uh, uh, upstream OpenStack packaging program. So now it should be there in all of these distros. Oh, well, that's, that's, that's excellent. But you guys excellent. did a great job, and this is actually very useful. I think that you might want to use, uh, publish your Murano Docker on Docker Hub, for example, right? Uh, yeah, actually, there's an automated build um, that's um, with, with on Docker Hub. You can, when you run the script, it pull down that image automatically, and you run it. So you don't need to build a Docker in, uh, on yourself, the okay. image yourself. Okay, thank you. Uh, okay. And as, a, as, we, as developers also, it's, really, it's, really, it's a really quick environment for us to set up and build applications, that's right? That's actually part of my question. Have you considered uh, pushing this uh, to the upstream documentation and making this one of the default ways for people to try and run on like, Pushing that, uh, um, yeah, that would be a good idea, but so I think one of the things we ran into is that it's highly, the environment we set it up, is highly dependent on if we were running on Ubuntu 14.04, and there's some packages kind of, kind of a little bit old. Well, most of yeah, runs on right, Ubuntu. right. Nice. So what we want, would like to do next would be, I mentioned earlier, is to uh, using Docker Compose. To make it this more like a Docker, modern Docker application instead of a clunky everything in the, in the container, which is a bad way to use the container technology. So we want to do that, and maybe we can think about just you know publish that to the yeah, to document. In, in that, that's definitely a good idea. I, I we can try. I definitely invite you to from from the Murano side. I definitely invite you to come and well, I, I'd like to, the, to see that on the, the official Murano documentation. Yeah, yeah, sure. I, I think that's the way forward. Great, good. Okay. We'll, we'll think about it. That's a good I, idea. I maybe have just a tiny bit of uh, command that in the past two cycles, I think, in the, in the Pocket and Newton, we already can. In, no, in Newton, what was the previous command? In Medica and Newton, I think in Medica already you can just, if, if the VM has the access to the internet, it will pull the Murano agent from the. Um, from Pi P, so you don't really need to build it to build the specific images. But still, okay. this is, it yeah. Yeah. Right, right, That's actually right. great. Yeah, it's Thank really detailed. Yeah. 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 Good. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Do you, Rafael? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's go. Uh, where is Ian? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> All right. Okay. How many do we have? One, one. Just one? Just uh, one. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the number is uh, 121. Uno, dos, uno. Come on, check your. Not here? Try again? One, two, one. Okay. Going once? Going, going twice? One. Going once? Okay. Going twice? Okay, <laughs> let's try the next one. <laughs> All right, number nine, nueve. Oh, wow. Mm. Right. There you go. All right. All right, give him okay. a... All right, thank you. All right, that's um, our present for today. Uh, thank you for, for being here, and, and uh, thank you for your time. All right. Okay. Have a nice day. Here you go.